are now in the final four hours of the countdown for the launch of Space Shuttle Discovery on the STS-70 mission, with launch occurring from Pad B at Launch Complex 39. Here we see a uh, replay of the astronaut uh, crew breakfast this morning, which uh, occurred about 5.15. Mission Specialist Mary Ellen Weber. She will be working with the deployment of the tracking and data relay satellite. And our flight engineer, Mission Specialist Nancy Curry. Our commander for STS-70, Tom Henricks. And next to him, his pilot, Kevin Kriegel. And mission specialist, Dr. Don Thomas, who together with Dr. Mary Ellen Weber will be working later today, about six hours after launch, to deploy the Tedris G tracking and data relay satellite. And our STS-70 uh, cake with the emblem there on the table. Meanwhile, out at Launch Pad 39B, the final inspection team has been going through their routine inspections looking for any buildup of ice on the external tank or any of the flight surfaces that could break off and strike Space Shuttle Discovery during launch. The ice team has a number of tools, which includes a portable infrared scanner to obtain temperature measurements on the surface of the vehicle, and it can spot uh, any leaks in the uh, external tank or the umbilicals. And the team also takes this as a last opportunity to look at the pad to assure that there's no loose debris around which could uh, also strike the orbiter at launch. There we see our commander, Tom Henricks, ready to go, suited up with his helmet. And pilot Kevin Kriegel. It's also ready to go. Had completed a fit check of the helmets. Kevin's first flight, and we'll be hearing from him later on of what he's anticipating for his first mission. And mission specialist Dr. Don Thomas. You will be busy later this afternoon working with the deployment of the tracking and data ray satellite, which is the main order of business for today. There is Dr. Mary Ellen Weber, who will be working with Dr. Thomas later this afternoon on the deployment of the IUS Tedris. And our flight engineer, Mission Specialist Nancy Curry. She'll be seated in the aft center seat during launch and re-entry. Mm -hmm. And the suit up activities are about completed so that uh, the crew will be headed out for the pad here in about another 15 minutes. Now we can see the uh, crew somewhat better. Pilot Kevin Kriegel without his helmet. This is shuttle launch control at T minus three hours in holding. We're preparing now to come out of the built in hold in three, two, one. And the clock is now at T minus three hours and counting. All of our activities continue to be on schedule this morning. We're not working any technical problems, and the weather appears favorable. And as we mentioned just a few moments ago, the astronauts are just about to leave for the launch pad and will begin boarding Discovery on time. 
Now at T-minus 2 hours, 59 minutes, 35 seconds and counting, this is Shuttle Launch Control. This is Shuttle Launch Control at T-minus 2 hours, 56 minutes, 2 seconds and counting. And we see the astronauts have just left the suit-up room. So our pilot, Kevin Kriegel, with a good luck sign and being wished well by some of the astronaut support personnel. And our activities right now are proceeding right to the minute. Here's our pilot, or our commander, Tom Hendricks, pilot Kevin Kriegel, mission specialist uh, Don Thomas. they go. The white room technicians are being advised now that the astronauts are leaving the crew quarters and to expect them shortly. And here we see the astronauts now arriving at the 190 foot, 5 foot level of the fixed service structure at pad B, walking over to the orbiter access arm. And some of them will wait, uh, wait out on the orbiter access arm while other crew members are being assisted with their helmets and other attire so that it doesn't get uh, too crowded. The uh, white room is not very large. And of course, Tom Hendricks will be the first one aboard. This is Shuttle Launch Control at T-minus 2 hours, 27 minutes, 27 seconds and counting. As we see Commander Tom Hendricks boarding Space Shuttle Discovery. This is his third flight into space, his first as uh, Commander. see Dr. Mary Ellen Weber. And like uh, Kevin Kriegel, she's also making her first uh, flight today. Pilot Kevin Kriegel now preparing to board Discovery. This is uh, his first flight. Good morning, Tom. Yeah, loud and clear. And 
we're seeing now mission specialist Don Thomas preparing for uh, for boarding. Just in front here, we see Mission Specialist Nancy Curry being assisted with her flight crew equipment, and she was raised in Troy, Ohio. Houston, MS-1, com check. Discovery, Houston, Don, we have you loud and clear. Help me. Morning, Kurt. Have you loud and clear also. You're the same, and welcome aboard. Thanks a lot. We're ready to go here. Houston for the CDR and PLT voice check on air to ground two. How do you read? CDR loud and clear. PLT loud and clear. Discovery Houston uh, read you both loud and clear. Configure for air to air voice check. And the hatch is being closed and sealed exactly on time. And here is Bob Cabana returning in the shuttle training aircraft. He has been doing approaches to runway 15 at the shuttle landing facility, assessing those conditions, and will be going up for another pass. Runway 15 has been designated as the runway we would use in the event of an emergency today, which is a basically a uh, Northwest to southeast approach. Yeah, let's just 
Go for OAA retract. And the orbiter access arm can be moved back into position around the hatch in about 30 seconds should an emergency occur. T-minus seven minutes and counting. Next milestone is the start of the auxiliary power units by pilot Kevin Kriegel. He'll flip three switches in the cockpit to start each of the three APUs and then report that's complete. JRPSOTC. Capcus, start APU and hydraulic strip trot recorder. And that's a good. Perform APU pre start. APU pre starts in work. Moving the flight controls through their test pattern. main engines now being gibbled. All of these steering checks to assure that we have proper control during ascent. Now to retract the Gox beanie cap. TLT, OTC, clear caution and warning memory. Verify no unexpected errors. That's in work. T minus two minutes, 30 seconds. And the gaseous oxygen vent hood, which vents. Close and lock your visors and initiate O2 flow. And on behalf of everyone in the control room, have a great mission. Close and lock your visors and initiate O2 flow. We're looking forward to it. Thanks for your help. And the vent arm retraction underway on schedule. DLS is go for ET LH2 pressures. Minus 90 seconds. Sound suppression water system now being armed. That's a quantity of 300,000 gallons of water in the water tank at the pad, which will flow at a rate of 900,000 gallons a minute, starting at T minus 16 seconds. T minus one minute now. for the handoff to Discovery's onboard flight computers at T-minus 31 seconds. NTD, CBRS. Go ahead, BRS. Call hold. Hold at 31. Down that clock, we'll hold at T-minus 31 seconds. And we do have a hold. We'd like permission around a multi-path uh, test contingency. SP entity. I'll 
Okay, the result of the contingency is good. We're clear for launch. I copy. FTE. Uh, FTE understands, and uh, we're ready to go. I copy. Launch director entity. Ready to go. Thank you. All personnel, countdown clock will begin momentarily. Entity, this is GLS. We have go to resume. GLS, go ahead and pick up the count. I resume on my mark. Two, one, mark. GLS, go for auto sequence start. And we've had the handoff to Discovery's onboard computers. 20. Sound suppression water system activated. 13 seconds. 10, 10 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Main engine ignition. 4, 3, 2, 1. And liftoff of Space Shuttle Discovery to complete NASA's constellation of tracking stations in the sky. Houston now controlling the flight of Discovery. Roger, roll, Discovery. Discovery completes the roll to place the shuttle in a heads down, wings level position for the eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Twenty-seven seconds into the flight, Discovery's three liquid fuel main engines now throttling back in a three-step fashion to 67% of rated performance to lessen the stress on the shuttle's zero surfaces as it passes through the sound barrier. seconds into the flight, the main engine's now beginning to rev up once again to 104% of rated performance, including the new Block 1 engine, all three main engines performing normally, as are the three power-producing fuel cells and Discovery's three hydraulic power units. Discovery Houston, go at throttle up. Go at throttle up. Discovery now 63,000 feet in altitude, 8 miles downrange. All systems continue to function normally in the early stage of the fourth shuttle flight of the year. Twenty seconds left in first stage performance of the solid rocket boosters. Discovery approaching the 155,000 foot mark in altitude, some 26 miles downrange. Booster officer confirms solid rocket booster separation. Discovery Houston, performance nominal. Copy nominal performance. I hear door opening, Houston. Roger, Discovery, we have a good picture. Discovery, Houston, the folks at Sunnyvale would uh, like to know where that ice came from. Did you see where it uh, departed from? It was difficult for us to tell where it originated from. The first time we saw it was just after the uh, IUS cleared the bay, and it uh, could have come from around the uh, back of the ASC. Understand, that sounds likely. Yeah, the uh, circumference uh, appeared to be very similar to the uh, IUS circumference. Oh, I see. Yeah, the shape of the curve. That's right. Discovery, we're about 90 seconds from the Tedris handover. We may lose the picture here shortly. Okay, it looks like the show's about over anyway. Uh, we'd love more. 
Well, we'll keep it coming throughout the following week. Tommy, here we are getting ready for deploy. I'm sitting in the commander seat up front watching uh, the orbiter systems. Tom's in the back getting ready to do uh, the step maneuver. Nancy is running the, uh, the cameras, and uh, Don is over on the left-hand side controlling the IOS controls, and Mary Ellen is over on the right-hand side monitoring the uh, IOS systems. And you could tell today that was a very well-trained team that we're seeing. These are uh, some shots with the camcorder of the deploy that you'll see. This is a real team effort up here. Everybody was busy operating cameras, uh, flying the orbiter, and deploying the satellite up here, up here. So it was a team effort on our part and also a big team effort on the ground. We had people at White Sands, Sunnyvale, all around the world helping to support the satellite deploy. And we really appreciate the great help and support that made it possible today. That's a gorgeous picture. Uh, discovery and all of you working together have put another big building block in the space infrastructure. And there you can see it's on its way, it's just li leaving the uh, support equipment here and uh, on its way out to geosynchronous orbit where we'll be supporting uh, future missions, Space Station Freedom, and the uh, Hubble Space Telescope, to name just a few applications. That's a beautiful deploy, Discovery. It went out nice and smooth. We didn't see any rates on the satellite at all. Yeah, that's right. Copy, uh, Discovery. It's interesting, uh, six years ago, the IOS put Galileo on the way to Jupiter, and they just released their probe uh, towards that planet last night. Shots of the payload bay cameras of the deploy there, Tom. And Discovery, we see that uh, very clearly. Thanks. And Discovery, we can see five faces in the aft windows there. Discovery, you see a piece of debris there next to the satellite. That was actually a piece of ice that appeared to be about three foot long. It went by the window previous to this view, and we verified it was ice, and it did uh, break in a couple of pieces. Okay, thanks, uh, Discovery. I'm sure we would have asked you about that, and thanks for allaying that concern. <laughs> 